Yeah, so the problem with the one in the mini is actually it covers, at least what we understand now, obviously they didn't think of it that way, but uh, the problem with the mini actually covers a lot of different domains in philosophy, um, in metaphysics and epistemology, in political philosophy, um, and even in, I think, in aesthetics, but we can talk about that. I and mean, I think that's actually one of the cool implications of the Trinity. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, um, yeah, so the, the one of many actually covers a lot of different uh, philosophical areas. So in the area of metaphysics, I think it's it, you can, it's more readily seen of what we mean. And so the question of the one in one of the many is the ultimate question of what is ultimately at, or what ultimately is reality? Is it is it one thing, like a unity of things, or is it completely just distinct many things and we sort of group them together? Um, you know, conceptually, but really there really is no underlying unity of things. Okay, so these two are actually antitheses, right? They're two polar opposites and they're both extremes. Um, so what you have is this idea of monism, philosophical monism, where you have the sort of the, n n not simply we're just talking about like a numerical one, right? That's not, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a unity, you know, a unity of all things, sort of the part makes up the whole, and the whole is what's reality. Um, Brahma, like in Hinduism, that would be sort of like a, I guess, theological monism, but it's getting to the same thing. Pantheism, the idea that there's only one thing, and we're all sort of part of that. Um, so that's on one hand. On the other hand is this idea of like atomism. Um, the idea of uh, atomism and... Yeah, atomism. I think Democritus was the one who sort of came up with this idea that there, everything is sort of like um, individual particles. I guess that's where we get the word out of from, like ind small individual particles. Like everything, ultimately, if we divided everything, there isn't this underlying unity. In fact, it's just like these, you know, plethora, these individual things. Um, and other philosophers that tried to understand what that substance was. Um, you know, I think Leibniz was, was sort of into that, you know, the monadology that everything ultimately isn't just an atom, it's, a, it's this monad, right? Um, you know, other Greek philosophers thought it was like fire and stuff, I think. I think, maybe I, I might be wrong. Um, but yeah, so the, basically polytheism would be a good example, like theologically. Okay, so that there's many gods, not just one. And they're all sort of disconnected. And, yeah, and so, I mean, th this is really what philosophers has wondered was is sort of like the fundamental question of all reality because it actually answers a lot of things. Um, and I'm getting this from Rush Dooney, but he, because he wrote about this a lot, was how this problem actually sees itself in political theory, um, you know, which is more ultimate, the power of the state or the individual. You know, if it's the power of the state, then you see problems of totalitarianism, um, you know, tyranny, mm -hmm. you know, the, yeah, communism, whatever, you know, whatever it is, uh, that where the, the authority of the state becomes the unwielding power and that actually diminishes um, the value of the person. Um, actually, the person doesn't really mean anything. It's sort of uh, just subjects of the state. Um, and so that, that already has its own underlying problems. But on the other, other side, if if uh, atomism and sort of the, the many went over, then you get a sense of anarchy or state of anarchy where there is no law. Everybody is a, is a, is a law to themselves and um, they can do whatsoever they please, right? Um, which also has its own problems and can lead to other disastrous things. And so in political theory, there always needs to be this balance between uh, the individual and the person's freedom and then also the value of law and the value of the state, you know. Um, and also this problem, you know, it's like seeing like in epistemology, you know, how, how we even do knowledge. And I think this problem is, I think how most people might understand the problem of universals, right? This is the difference between Plato and Aristotle, where Plato sort of had the idea of the forms and that universals were the real realities and the particulars were the ones who were, you know, participating in that. Um, and Aristotle, his student, disagreed with that. He said, no, there really is no these forms. In fact, the particulars is the one, you know, that has more ultimacy. 
Um, and so the, the problem arises is how we're able to even group or even like talk about knowledge because knowledge is sort of built up on sort of these claims of generalizations about particulars, right? Um, you know, I, concepts of, of, of things like tunis and carness and whatever, and we apply those things with cars and we have our understanding of, um, you know, their nature and what they do and we help, we help project those things in the future. Um, I mean, there, there is just so much interconnectedness going on with here, um, but that, you know, that sort of is the problem is what is more ultimate. Is it the, the universals, sort of the, 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 the concepts that give meaning to these particulars? Um, or is it the particulars that we see and then we sort of generalize and create these concepts, which is more, which is more ultimate in our knowledge? Um, and there's two different schools, um, which is readily seen in sort of medieval uh, philosophy. Uh, you know, with this, like within like scholastics, you have the nominalists who sort of sided with the particulars and Aristotle, and then you have the realists um, who sided more with Plato and and that kind of thing. So, but um, yeah. yeah, so yeah, so I mean, I mean, it has a lot of problems, or, or or has a lot of implications on different uh, different areas of philosophy. Um, I think that's why William James talked about how he was pregnant with meaning because he understood, I think, the implications of this view. Um, and, and and yeah, I mean, we can also see it in theology, right? I mean, I mean, the biggest difference between Christianity and the rest of the Abrahamic faiths is this tension because for them they hold to a very unitarian, monotheistic God that there's only one person, right. and so they sort of elevate that oneness or that unity. Um, over the many and I think that has its own philosophical problems as well